Okay. Talk to mommy. Yeah, to you. Isn't it? I think so. I got about all that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am here, like, again, I'm so lucky I get to talk to these amazing women, but I'm here with the spectacularly gorgeous, offensively pretty, also intelligent, <laughs> kind of the whole package, rude, May Lindstrom. Likewise, my dear. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for letting us into your space. It is, I, I've been here before, but it is, it's kind of grown in size and you have definitely outgrown it. We have, but in, in a really good way. It feels cozy and full and as you see now, you walk in the door and you can't even move. So we're, we're packed to the brim, but it's all the best stuff. It's all the best, best, best ingredients in the world and fun projects that we're working on. And so coming No, definitely, here and it, I'm so chilled. You walk in, I just walked, we walked in and we were like, hi everyone, and everyone's like, oh, hi, hi, like, you know, it's just so nice. And it's all the blue cocoon in the air. Oh, no, no, now that would make them. me chill. I said to Ben in the lift on the way up, because my, uh, Ben's filming behind the camera as always. I, um, was, I always give him like a rundown just before we go and talk to someone, you know, this is so and so, this is so and so. And I said, oh, this is me, and she makes blue cocoon, which is one of my favorite products of all time. And that's kind of, he kind of, his eyes registered like, Mm. <laughs> you, 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 even he knows that that's like a, oh okay so thank you for doing this I know you don't do a lot of chat and videos because you are very busy with babies as well yeah. but I just thought it would be a great opportunity while I was here and in your space to talk to you about the business and how you got started and what your plans are are you sort of you know do you have plans for world domination or <laughs> even if I know the answer to these things or are you kind of quite happily going along on an even keel and so why don't you give us a little background for the people who don't know now if you're watching my channel you do know who may is obviously <laughs> but for those who don't just like a you know if you are doing a bio of yourself how would you describe how you fell into the business because it's not your usual story really I don't, oh, well, I don't think so by, by that that's a compliment <laughs> what I mean is what, what I mean by that it's a compliment is that I always feel that you're one of the brands that does beauty with purpose and integrity rather than always thinking about shareholders and bottom line that's what I mean by you haven't come from the normal route well, which is right. what I'm trying to embrace more and more of because we have enough corporate mm -hmm. I feel I feel like we have enough corporate skincare and the same things just keep getting regurgitated and regurgitated. You know, occasionally there's innovation, which I appreciate, but my heart kind of goes to, I'm led towards the people who are real innovators and doing it for themselves. You know, you're not loaded, you start a company with the best intentions and you get growth that's based on organic love for the business. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant. Well, thank you. <laughs> I love to be seen like that. Um, we, we have built this from love and sweat and tears and not in any exaggeration of a way. This is a family business. Mm -hmm. This is my husband and I, really the whole time. We don't have any investors, we never did. Um, to this day, I don't have a single salesperson on my team. I don't have marketing, I don't have social media. We grow from building something that, that we love. Mm -hmm. And then we give everything to, and we don't compromise. And really, we've poured everything into building the most beautiful possible experience I could imagine. Mm -hmm. And putting behind it the best, freshest, most pure, most potent ingredients from all around the world and really doing our due diligence there, mm -hmm. um, both with ethics and with what the what comes through our door. It does come through that door. Everything is made here and made fresh and we put a birthday on every bottle. I love the it's birthday. All, it's all right there. It's all transparent. There's Everything happens within these walls. Yeah. The ingredients come through our door. We blend everything fresh. We bottle everything by hand. It's all shipped here. There's no outsourcing of anything. Yeah. And I think that's a piece that's really unique um, because I have complete and total control. Yeah. And I'm a little bit of a freak about it. Yeah, but that, that shows <laughs> though so. in, the, in the detail rather than, I don't think you're a control freak the way that the industry might perceive a control freak. Yeah. You're a control freak in the details. The attention is to the detail of the product. I make a promise to our clients and that promise is one of um, unparalleled quality and no compromise mm. and we don't cut any corners and that shows up in every area of the business um, and it's just super important to me it's really from my heart and uh, and it's an emotional piece yeah we're not um, you're right we're not thinking about the bottom line we're not trying to grow and be massive and get bought up by XYZ. Mm -hmm. um, that's not part of the plan at all. This is my literal name on yeah, every box exactly. and I take that really personally and I um, take 
being entrusted with the care of someone's skin yeah. very personally. And you can um, tell that as well, the way you communicate on social media is a lesson, I think, for nearly every other person in the industry in how to, and I'm not going to smoke up you, but May, you know me, <laughs> but it, it, it's genuinely, you know, the way you respond to people on social media, even if there is rogue criticism, like if someone's mm. delivery didn't turn up on time or, you know, I mean, you never see criticism of the product, you just don't see it in your brand. Mm. But, you know, even if someone's delivery didn't turn up, something minor, you're, you know, you're straight on it. And it's always done with a, the good intention. I would, mm. you know, your intention to me just seems pure and you never seem to have wavered. You know, some people might start by saying that something, but then their behavior shows another side, perhaps. Mm. We can't hide from who you are. <laughs> no, quite. No, well, you could hide behind me. it if you weren't on social media, but as you say, yeah. you're the one who's sort of checking and keeping an eye. And well, and it is only me, so I don't have any uh, excuse of, oh, well, so-and-so was on that day, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, it's me, and everybody knows that it's me. And, and also, you wouldn't make that excuse. No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't hide behind your team. You'd be like, sorry. I'm sorry. I exactly. do mess up, and yeah. I do say I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, that's, that's important in every element of business. And... Uh, I was young when I started this company, and I made a lot of mistakes. Yeah, <laughs> All that's how you learn. Coming up, that's how you learn, and <clears throat> and also every bit of that leads to something better. Mm -hmm. And everywhere where we fail or I drop the ball or um, in some way we don't meet expectations and bring complete and total delight, which is the goal, uh, is an opportunity for us to go higher, yeah. to continue to raise the bar, to continue to bring more. Um, and whether that's in our ingredients themselves, or the packaging, or the delivery experience, or how we ship to our international customers, which is always getting better, yeah. to what we do with our customer service, to our access, your access to me, your access to my team, yeah. transparency into our kitchen, all uh, of this. I remember when you were on bed rest, which you've uh -huh. spoken about on Instagram, I'm not yeah. breaking any sort of pro tours, but you, yeah. met, when you were on bed rest with your second child. And I knew you were on bed rest. I don't think you had quite announced it. And yeah. you were telling a customer to email you. You were going to help them with something. And I was like, take a rest, <laughs> woman. Put your feet up. Literally stop. You know, you're just like, I was like you were laying down, down but doing this. The email. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, don't give me your email. No, business doesn't stop. Yeah. It doesn't stop. And I, I had to cook a baby. That was my job. And I did that. A very um, cute baby, by the way. He's too much. It's he's outrageous. Too much. I'm really sad that he's not here. I know. I was like, <laughs> bring the baby, bring the baby. He was napping. But it just means you've got to come over to my house. Which I will, because you also have a pet pig. I do. Which I think would have been great vlog content. So a bit rude if you knocked us over there, but never mind. Okay, so <laughs> take it. come to the studio. Well, no, that's a little, <laughs> slight little alteration of work. So, so tell us about how you started. What was your sort of, where did you think, this is what I want to do? and you know the first product you made and how that this happened oh it's a tricky one mm. it's, um, I've been formulating since I was a kid um, really is the is the real answer my um, my heart is in plants is in nature is in the roots that we come from and and bringing that into how we connect to ourself how we connect to each other um, the relationship to ourself and to our skin I think there's something really beautiful in that. A lot of my first memories are um, are having this shared experience with my mom. And my mom is far from a fancy lady. She's like a butterfly. <laughs> um, and we lived in the country, and I grew up on 80 acres in the middle of nowhere in northern Minnesota. And we would go to the river and pull clay out of the river and cover our, our skin and our whole bodies and um, be these little mud nymphs. <laughs> <laughs> That's and a good name for a product. Mud nymph. Right, mud nymph coming soon. <laughs> uh, if I was a new product maker. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and I have so many memories like that, starting from being a, a very small child up into my teenage years, and and exploring um, exploring with my mother in this way. But both her and I have incredibly, incredibly sensitive skin. Mm -hmm. And so we couldn't just go to the store and bring home masks and have girls mask night together. Yeah. We had to make it. And uh, so from, from childhood, this thing that was a source of play and connection to my mom, um, connection to the literal earth that I came from, uh, was just a part of my blood. And what started as child's play um, I would far rather play with 
with plants and make potions. Mm -hmm. And now I watch my little girl who's almost six and, and there's potions all over the house. It's the funniest thing now. She's like stealing all of my glass from everywhere and I always have these random potions in the house that are in the half process and then she'll mix them all together. And you're like... <laughs> put them everywhere and I have no idea what anything is. And you don't know if something's going to be good or no. No, and it also doesn't matter. I think it's such a cool and magical thing now to discover these little... Um, little like apothecary setups all over our house because it Ooh. just brings me back we're to in the studio by the way this is a working place of work so there is noise <laughs> in the background it's real life happening yeah exactly here. i'm sure the mic will pick us up and not too much of that though um, maybe maybe it doesn't matter it's fine um but I, I see that in her and it's just these flashbacks to my own childhood right. and to the magic of what that felt like and so I started from that place, from this place of child's play, of magic, of, of really just like finding the beauty in, in plants and plant medicine. And then I learned that was a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so through my younger years and through my teenage years, I just read everything that I could. I'd go to the library and I'd read books on plants and plant medicine and um, aromatherapy and uh, the whole world of of real science that's behind plants and what they can do, both on the inside of our body and the outside of our body. And in in that time, my intention was to become a chef. My background is in food. I started working in restaurants when I was 13, and that was always where I thought that I would go. Um, and where I come from in formulation for skincare, I really come from the same place with, with cooking, and it's mm -hmm. still about uh, finding the best ingredients, yeah. uh, procuring them in their freshest, most beautiful, unadulterated state, and then not messing it up. Yeah. Just leave it alone. Don't They're fix perfect it. as they are. <laughs> and so just get out of the way. And that happens with their skin too. You don't need 50 products. You don't need 10 products. You need a few that are incredible and that really resonate with you and your skin and your needs, not just what's new and cool and next. And trendy. Yeah, and I'm not trendy, and I don't use ingredients that are trendy, and I don't try and fit into the what's new box. Um, you know, practically every interview usually begins with well, what's next. I'm not. I it, I just always have had a. I, it's kind of I feel like it's an allergy for me yeah. when people are divide are making something purely to fill a spot on a shelf. Yeah. Like what's next? What's new? What's new? And deleting product before it's kind of resonated with people right. in some cases. Yeah. You know, we um, I spoke to Tiffany from Drunk Elephant a couple of days ago, and she mm -hmm. was she's very similar in her. It's weird, isn't it, Ben? She kind of talked to Ben off camera. Very similar <laughs> in her ethos of you know obviously you have different formulas and way of thinking, but her ethos is. I don't follow trends, I don't know what's going on in the industry, I put my yeah. head down, I do my own thing, and the success that follows is down to our customers. Right. You know? Well, I don't want that influence. I'm influenced really by what women have done for since the beginning of time. Yeah. And, and I choose ingredients that work, that are proven, that have a history, that have measurable results, um, that have affected my own skin, and have now affected many thousands of clients. Yeah. And, and that I know that I can procure. Yeah. That I know that I can actually source, that I can source ethically, ethically, that I know that when it comes to the door that it is what it says that it is, that it mm -hmm. hasn't touched 15 middlemen along the way yeah. and gotten adulterated and diluted and switched over and is and five years old before it even comes cheaper. to our shelf and made cheaper. Mm -hmm. And so I might pay 10x for that and so will you and that's part of it Yeah. because I cut no corners, none, yeah. and there's nowhere in how I formulate or how we do business from you do it on the, cheap. the ingredients to how it's made to how I care for my team to health insurance to mm -hmm. you know all of the things that go into running a business that I think yeah. is ethical and that I can put my name on yeah. proudly. Yeah. Um, Which is nice because some people put their name to things and it I don't know there are a few people in the industry who don't have the same ethos I think and that's why when things you know when you see when you interact a lot with brands which you know myself other bloggers and all the skincare community out there do you can see who takes things really seriously and who sees the customer as part of a group of things they have to deal with as opposed to the end product in a way you well, know who, who it's for you know what yeah. it's all for completely so what was your first product <laughs> first product um, well it depends first product from the collection or first product in general <laughs> yeah first product from your collection 
<laughs> well, the first... Pretend the, I know nothing. Right. The first piece that, that came into the collection for the collection was actually the good stuff, mm -hmm. oddly enough, which is now officially retired as of this year, which is heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm sure it'll come back as a perfume or something. Yeah, okay, so just so you know, <laughs> I, we had a big hug when May arrived, <laughs> and I said, oh my God, you smell good. And it was that kind of, like, <laughs> when, you, when you go... God, that person smells good, and I'm so glad I know you, so I could say, "What are you wearing?" I didn't even, I, you know, I was like, "Oh hi, oh my God, you smell so good." So I think you should do a perfume. It'll happen. It's something that she's twinkling with. We all with know outside. it's going to happen. There's no yeah. way I cannot do it. It's like okay. Jesus. If I'm, if I'd have been stood next to you on the subway, I would have been going, <laughs> <laughs> which is a bit inappropriate. We are in LA. I mean, you never know. You're in my home. You're welcome to smell me all you like. Sorry. Just bring it in. Come on. <laughs> so, after the good stuff. After the good stuff, well, the, the collection launched with four pieces. Yeah. So the original four were the good stuff, the youth do, mm -hmm. the clean dirt, and the problem solver. Mm -hmm. And that was such a powerful little quartet. That's like, come on, that's like launching with a Bentley, a Rolls Royce, a Ferrari, and a Porsche. <laughs> that's like, you know, where do you pick Except from that? Except you don't need those four cars. No. You do need these four yeah. products. I was meaning and more in the... Uh, quality. Well, I'll take it. Yeah. But really, it, it felt very complete to me in a lot of ways. It really did check all the boxes for my own personal skin and mm -hmm. what I'd been using for clients for years. The oldest of those formulas was the problem solver. I'd been using versions of that for years with, with individual clients on a bespoke basis. And uh, and I love that formula. It works so well. That product, I love watching people when they discover, Yeah. when they really discover the problem solver. Because when they first get it, they're like, well, what is this? It's or like rediscover a it. A lot of times people will have it yeah. and not really know how to use it. And once they figure out how to use it, how it works for them, the ratios, um, how to mix it, where it fits in their ritual, what products to use it with or not use it with. I feel like we um, could do 15 videos. Oh, we could just so do much. another one of you we going. We should. We should just mix it. Yeah, I might get you to off camera do a quick problem solving mix because I remember watching uh, Zoe, Zoella, yeah. and she got the problem solved. She ordered it. We got her on the Maylin's from Bandwagon. And the first time she used it, I can't remember, I remember seeing her face with it on and she was going, holy wow, I had no idea, yeah. oh my lord. No, it's But that is a product that makes people go like, whoa. Yeah. And Which I think is great because that, knowing the product, that's testament to the power of what can, you know, because a lot of the natural green botanical movement gets dissed now in Europe and in, and in the UK, sure. partly by our community because a lot, a lot of people have jumped onto the bandwagon and they're saying things like non-toxic and green and clean and da-da-da, but it's just lip service, yeah. you know, and with things like the problem solver and blue cocoon and things like that, I mean, obviously with all your range, but you know, there's a couple of things in particular, when people actually get it onto their face right. and you see the transformation, the shift, you can so see the, the shift. Work. Yeah. It's not just about being green. Yeah. You actually you don't see that in any of my communication anywhere. No. Uh, I am a green brand. Yeah. By the nature of it, by the ingredients of it, when you read the ingredients deck and where I come from as a formulator, but that's not what it is. Yeah. I formulate for results first and foremost, mm -hmm. and it just happens to be that I've found that the ingredients that give the best results for skin like mine, which is what most of my clients have, mm -hmm. is is these ingredients that come from the earth that resonate naturally with our bodies and bring these results. Mm. But I also don't mess around. It's not just yeah. light and fluffy. Yeah. I, I mean, you're, the the, results. Just, and so I yeah, use the context, really powerful ingredients. You're not making this at a kitchen sink. There's no. a, the whole of next door, sort of in the next part of, the, of this floor, is a lab. It's not like, you know, we do give the impression that you're here in your home and you're doing, but that, it's not <laughs> a home. It is a lab, and there's people over there in white coats and things, sort of keeping everything pristine. Mm -hmm. And so. That I think it's easy to to forget, you know, if you are a high quality, mm -hmm. sort of ethically sourced brand that is in its foundations green, yeah. that you are doing it for the results on the skin, not just to make a claim that you're a green product. Well, it's not interesting to me what's not in it. Yeah. It's interesting to me what is in it yeah. and what those ingredients do, and every one has a vital purpose. Mm -hmm. There's no fluff, no fillers. It's it's all really integral to the formulas, and you see the results. So. Those first four, yeah, they're major because the problem solver has has such incredible effects, yeah, especially over long term. Cult following, and particularly people with with acne, mm -hmm. um, hormonal acne, especially. Uh, but the clean dirt was actually the the ballpark out of out of the really. In the first couple of years, it was. Uh, 
which was really cool to see because for me that was a little bit of a black sheep right. um, because it's messy and it's weird and there's this bottle full of powder and it smells like gingerbread cookies and I didn't think anybody would get it but what it does for the skin is so incredible it's so brightening and great if you have any kind of hyperpigmentation or discoloration mm -hmm. and uh, congestion all that just ick that settles in and I find it to be the most instant results piece of the whole collection yeah. And when I launched, that's actually what people first discovered um, and saw the results in and got really excited about and, and gave us our reputation from the very beginning as, yes, it's green, yes, it's beautiful, and it's so much more than that mm. because you can see it in your skin from the moment you use yeah. it. With the cleaner, when you use it, after you massage it off, you can feel the dead skin release in your fingertips if you massage your skin. It's amazing. You can see it. You can see it come off in your fingertips. And once you've figured that out, there's really nothing that compares to it. Mm. Um, and then the Youth Dew has just been a star always. Yeah. And it's such a gorgeous product. It is. I love it. It's, just it's one the of those single product that my husband uses. Which the single product. Well, at least you've got a new thing product. on. He doesn't even wash his face, but You wouldn't know that to look at his skin. No, he's beautiful. Uh, it's a little unfair. It is a bit offensive, actually. <laughs> well, there's good-looking men around that do very little. <laughs> but yeah, the Youth Dew is one of those products that when you, you, you know it's going to be good when it's in the palm of your hand. Yeah. That's when I get excited because I test so many products. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, you have to have the context in your head of, okay, if the formulation of this is more chemical based and I use chemical to make, you know, man-made and then all oh, this is more this. And you can always, I can always tell by doing the first touch, I can mm -hmm. usually tell if something's going to be good. But things like the Youth Dew, Blue Cocoon, things that you put on your skin and you go, oh my God, I cannot wait to get that here. <laughs> Youth Jew is one of those, like I hate any, uh, God bless the palm on my hand because I'm just like, get it off my hands, get it onto my face. Um, what came next? After that, the... And where did you go start selling? When you launched, where did you go on sale? Uh, I launched with my first retailer the day my daughter was born. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, you don't do it things like by half, do you? I don't. Jeez. It wasn't on purpose. I didn't know it was going to happen that way, but you know, that's They were like, mate, the sales are really works. good and you're like, breathe, breathe. <laughs> Well, we launched our website very quietly in November of 2011. See, I love that you're um, so new as well. Such a, you know, yeah. you're still new. Right, like it's it's funny because in, in the green sphere of things, uh, I've been around a while. Yeah. And, and before a lot of the newer brands that have come and gone. Um, but in the big spectrum of things, we are young. Yeah. We are very yeah, young. Young is a better term than new. Young is better. And... Uh, yeah, my daughter's turning six, and so there's a there's a good measure. There's there. a nice correlation. Um, she it's, grows. And it's actually nice. Grows. I can physically watch Both. the the trajectory yeah. of, of our history. Um, and who was your first retailer? First retailer was Spirit Beauty Lounge. Where are they? Are they still going? Gone. Oh, uh, wow. But she was online. She was the first like really big online Embrace green, green beauty um, retailer, and she's awesome and such an inspiration. And if I had made a list of like you know my top retailers that I would have wanted uh, to launch with, she would have been number one. And and that just somehow happened. I launched the website really quietly in November 2011. Um, our packaging finalized January 2012, and I was pregnant and very sick. I have oh. difficult pregnancies. Mm -hmm. And so the launch got just kind of pushed. And then, um, and somehow Spirit stumbled across my website, which is always just kind of a magical, yeah. crazy thing because you put up a website and it doesn't anyone mean anyone's going to see it. No, completely. <laughs> and I didn't have, I didn't have anything. I didn't have a board of directors. I didn't have a team. It was a one, I was a one-man band. I had the support of my husband running to the post office for me. Yeah. Um, but it was just me, and uh, and had been me for for years. And um, and then we put up this website and it's crickets, you know, nothing. But then one day I just got this email from Spirit and she's like, what you're doing looks really interesting. Send me your products and I want to try them. And then my mind just blew open because it was like, oh, I have a total girl crush on you. I think you're amazing. Oh, <laughs> and so I sent her, I sent her a, a, a box of, of our collection and, and she loved it and wanted to put it in her store. And she was the first that we launched with, and that was in a time where everyone was watching what she did. It was before all the online green stores that yeah. are, exist Kitchen, now. All those they places, all 
followed. They all followed her. Wow, she's a bit of an innovator. So she was a leader, and um, and so it was a beautiful way to launch and a great way for that to happen. And she was a big fan of the clean dirt um, right. and talked about it incessantly. And and we grew really organically from there. Once we were there, um, it just started just snowballing. Yeah. And uh, and and it hasn't stopped really, frankly, yeah. and we, I still don't have time to seek out a single retailer that I want. Mm -hmm. I still haven't gone after a single one that I've wanted. And you know, um, I had asked your advice a couple years ago on what to do with the UK. Turns out, I'm still not ready to try and grow. I'm still trying to do the best that we can, yeah. to take the best care that we can of the retail partners that we currently have, and the customers that we currently have. Mm -hmm. And um, because you're not on a Even big mass production line with really cheap ingredients at the end of the day. No, and we never will be. No. And I'm not interested in that. And we talked about that before. Like, mm. what are my goals? And, you know, my goal might be to be in the best 100 stores in the world. Mm. 100. Yeah, which is nothing. Which to is the nothing. That's nothing. Not... I want to be in a thousand doors yeah. here in the U.S. Yeah. and a thousand over there and a thousand over there, and uh, you know, or you know, name X big retailer and be in two hundred of their doors. Yeah, um, that's just that, not what we um, do. It becomes unmanageable. It is unmanageable for the uh, care for the care and the attention to detail that I know that you want in your yeah. process. It's unmanageable. And nobody does what we do. No. Nobody does what we do here. Nobody does what we do through Maylindstrom.com. Mm -hmm. Our our direct business is so special to me and such a big part of my heart because we get to directly touch and we get to send fresh from our studio. Yeah. And so there's absolutely nothing between us and the best service. And so really the last couple of years our focus has been very strong on just enhancing that and yeah. doing everything that we can to take the best care of each customer. Yeah. Um, and enhancing the product Every time I have access to a better and better ingredient, a better source, going closer, yeah. um, that's all we do. And so instead of spending time on marketing and in sales and then trying to blow up or trying to, you know, you're trying lower to maintain and restrain. It feels yeah, like yeah. I actually say just say no. Yeah. I just say no. I know you do. <laughs> that's all I do. I do. <laughs> But but I enjoy it. No I enjoy it. New retailer is at like no, three hundred to one do it. right now, can't and <laughs> we've also let go of thirty to forty percent of our retailers over the last two years, yeah. which um, you know we don't talk about, and that's not in any kind of sphere. But if you watch what we're doing, we're actually narrowing in, and that's a that's a hard one. It's a little bit of a bittersweet process, yeah. um, but it has everything to do with. I want the promises that we make to our clients to be universal. And to be carried through no and matter who's selling your product. And our retailers are an extension of who, who we are. They become a part of our family. And we have a lot of standards for our retailers. Um, because we put fresh date stamps, we put the birthday on every box and bottle, there's this transparency there. And I want, when you receive that bottle, for it to be fresh fresh and I want that to be a celebration it's part of our story it's part of what you're investing in that's where your dollars go and so if I if I sell those products to a retailer and then they keep it on their shelf for two years before it gets to you yeah which is common what I've just invested 10x in and you've just invested 10x in was suddenly just a waste yeah. it just got thrown away in the process or if I give everything to, um, you know, really giving the best customer service experience on the planet, um, but then our retailer it's not doesn't have that same education, yeah. doesn't have that same passion, can't really share that story, doesn't do independent um, consults, then I don't the know what the it's for. And so, so yeah. we miss it's just, it. It's just a door, like a tick on the yeah. door. So now, over the years, we just... You're you honing in. I like it. it. Everyone's <laughs> like saying bigger is better, bigger is better. And you're like, I don't know if like, I'm going to no, sell to them. It's I'm really just going to keep it here. I'm not going to do that. I'm like, oh my God. It's hard. Yeah. It's really hard for me to say yeah, no. But, but you're going to keep doing this though. And it'll just be a gentle succession of, I don't know. Well, doubt. we grow despite ourselves. Yeah. We <laughs> I love that. We grow. No, we really we do. Twice. We're, we're yeah. up 40% over last year saying no to everybody. Saying no to everything. Like <laughs> barricading our doors. Not doing these things. Yeah. You'll see, like, I, I don't 
I know, I'm so honoured you do don't do this. anything. I was like, yes, she said yes, yes, <laughs> mine's coming, mine's coming. <laughs> well, so, I adore you, so you're always oh, welcome. Thank you. But now, speaking of the door, yeah. talk to me about Blue Cocoon. Mm. Because, <laughs> honestly, if that product was a band, it would be Duran Duran, which <laughs> says everything to my viewer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I... Mm. And your cup of tea. And, and my tea. It would be English <laughs> breakfast. It would be English breakfast if it was tea. <laughs> uh, that is just one of those products that I just think, I don't know how your head put this into a jar, but I am grateful to the baby Jesus or whoever it was because that is just something that I know I will use up until the day I'm no longer here. Yeah. So tell me. And your last day. Slathered head to oh, every literally, I'll say right, when I'm dead. <laughs> I have a joke with my girlfriend Amanda that it's when it's morbid, but it's going in there. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. But when you, you know, I've seen my grandmother when she was in her casket, and we fixed mm -hmm. her lipstick because the mortuary yeah. had done such an atrocious job. Let's just care and attention. She would have been mortified going, you know, further <laughs> on her journey with that color coral. Mm -hmm. But I would, I, I have a deal with my girlfriend Amanda that uh, if I go first, she has to make sure I look like me <laughs> which I don't see it as morbid I know people do but I don't morbid. I don't want my kids to come and see me and go who's that <laughs> but, you know, they need if I if the joke would be if I was in my coffin with my hair in a bun uh, slathered in ice cream that would be yeah there, there's, there's my you're going to be holding it though with a nice little thing <laughs> with a cup of tea <laughs> in a dran dran t-shirt so right, tell me where did mm. Blue Cocoon come from the where did you think this could be this how did it become a bomb there are so many questions yeah <laughs> I mean, I don't say tell me the formula, but where it came from inside of you. Where did you? How did it evolve? It was the one that I dreamed of my whole life. See, see, I, knew, I didn't know that, but there you go. <laughs> it's the one. Um, for me, it's it's the it's the formula that transformed my own skin. Really, that if I if I had had access to this formula as a young person when my skin went crazy and it, and and just just for history, um, my problem wasn't acne. It wasn't, uh, although I've had that, I've, I've had that, I've gone through that hormonal, especially with pregnancies and postpartum and breastfeeding yep. and all of that. I've gone through that, I've um, went through it in my 20s, but that was never my major thing. Um, my major thing was that my skin would just fall off. I would, head to toe, I was covered in psoriasis, dermatitis, mm -hmm. eczema, um, but extreme. The, the kind where uh, if I touched the wrong thing, I'd get blisters and my skin would bleed. Right. And I used to go to sleep with like men's large socks mm. up to my elbows, covered in, creams and covered in and everything, because in the night I would scratch until my skin would fall off and I would bleed. I'm that person. Yeah. And still, when I go shopping in a shopping mall and I touch clothing because of all the preservatives that are in yeah. them, um, I get blisters on my hands. Right. And I have to make the choice in a public right. restroom whether to use that soap or to get blisters on my hands. Mm. And. Uh, and so I'm that person. And You're I the person who dries it on your own jeans. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm standing there in the next gym. Friction. <laughs> and I bring my own soap. Yeah. I, a lot of the times. And I, and I have a whole lifetime of that. And that started from childhood as a little girl. And one of my first and worst memories is being at um, a friend's house. My first sleepover as a little tiny girl. Probably my daughter's age. Like five. And washing my hands before dinner at my friend's house. And using... Um, using the soap they had in their bathrooms and screaming and having her parents rush in uh, to see what was wrong with me and my hands were just burning up and I was mm. so embarrassed and I didn't know what was going on and I didn't realize that my parents had always just protected me and, and right. my house always had natural products in it and I just didn't know what else was out there and it led to this whole um, chapter of my life where I was just scared to touch anything and uh, and I was scared of my own skin, and I was uncomfortable in my own skin, and if I um, was exposed to anything, and it was dietary as well, it was um, in hereditary, my mother has my same skin, my grandfather right. has my same skin, and so it goes all the way back, and what I eat, and what I touch, and just who I am gave me this skin, and, uh, and it got worse as I got older, and by my late teens and early 20s, um, I looked like a monster. Um. Then, and I say that in no small way. I'd be at the grocery store and there'd be little kids going, oh, what's wrong with her? Because my arms would be covered. It looked like I walked through a radioactive spider web. It looked like camouflage in my skin. And, um, and it was painful. 
and it was emotionally painful and it was physically painful and it was ugly and um, and it was a really scary time to be in my skin and you look at me today and nobody knows that story or you wouldn't think that um, at first glance and um, I always cringe a little bit when like the story introducing our collection is former model Mary Strum. It, it just eats me up because yeah. yes that was a particular chapter of my life where that was part of my career path um, but it's so small and has nothing to do with how I came into formulation. Yeah. Has nothing to do with it. Mm. Um, and I'm these formulas come from my own experience, from my own heart, from from years and years of research and development, and they're mine. And uh, <clears throat> creating the Blue Cocoon was was really like having a child for me. Mm. <laughs> and and it came into my world. I um, started researching Blue Tansy oh many years ago, uh, at least 10, 15 years ago, before it was in any skincare product mm -hmm. that I'd ever seen, <clears throat> and. I started learning about the properties of this plant and in every book that I read and every source that I found on it, it described what I was going through right. and, and it was used to heal what I was going through right. and so I'd read about it for years before I could gain access to it right. because when I started working on the Blue Cocoon, nobody was using Blue Tansy and it wasn't no, available. They I couldn't find it. No, well, they, they think they are. Yeah, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go to that. We'll go yeah. to that because I, I have stories about it too, but carry on. Sorry Absolutely. to interrupt. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, the properties of this plant, it's, it's heat relieving, it's inflammation relieving, it's pain relieving, it's antihistamine -hist mm -hmm. and anti-allergen. And so it was all the things that, that I would personally go through and it sounded pretty incredible. And then the way that it was used for skin, it was also used in aromatherapy for, for the same thing, um, for bringing down emotion, <clears throat> heat, anger, being out of control, feeling out of control, sleep disorders, um, all of these inflammatory emotional conditions. And, and that's a real thing. It's a steady thing. Yeah. Um, it's not just a foo foo yeah. <laughs> in the air. Um, and uh, so, I began working on on a formula that had those properties, the ones that I hadn't been able to touch on fully, that I had um, been working with, everything that I had formulated prior, um, and everything that I was working on with my disclosed clients was all based around healing and inflammation. And <clears throat> And everyone that I worked with on a bespoke level all came from these extreme, extreme conditions. It was all severe acne, um, psoriasis, dermatitis, rosacea, um, post-cancer, post-trauma, burns. Um, and that was my history. My history came from working with only these extreme conditions and only bespoke clients mm. um, who I'd work with physically and emotionally on these same issues that I had. And. Uh, and it was a thing that I did on the side, next to my cooking, mm. next to everything else that was going on in my world. And I had so much hesitation about bringing it to the market in a retail sense. Um, Why? I'm not a salesperson. Mm. And that's still true in my business, yeah. you'll see. <laughs> um, and uh, I knew that there was only one way that I'd want to do it. And I didn't know that I would be able to do that, or that people would care, or that people would pay for it. Yeah. Um, and pay what it actually costs to do yeah. it right. <clears throat> so let's and talk about that. Yeah. So blue tansy oil yeah. is now used far more frequently. The difference between the blue tansy and the blue cocoon, so how do you source it? Where does yours come from? Because well, that's not an easy process. Yeah. <clears throat> um, blue tansy only grows in Morocco. And, um, in a very specific way, in a very specific manner, and it's it's a difficult plant to harvest, and it's a difficult plant to harvest um, at the right potency. And now that there's so much demand for it, um, it's being grown in other places, or it's trying to be grown in other yeah. places, and uh, and it's very often mixed and adulterated with other oils. Mm -hmm. um, very frequently, it's mixed with chamomile. It's uh, very often dyed. Um, and these are things that people just don't know and that we didn't even know when we started um, 
you know, trying to secure our sources when I decided to actually put this in a product I'm bringing to market. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons that you don't see super exotic ingredients in my decks a lot of the time is because I can't trust the source. Yeah. And so I will only bring in an ingredient if I know that I can source it. And source it ethically and source it, source it long term. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm getting over a cold. <laughs> And so when I found Blue Tansy, it was a, a little bittersweet because it was the ingredient I'd always dreamed of. And I knew how much it would help me. I knew how much it would help every client that I'd ever worked with, whether you come from extreme skin concerns like I had and my previous history of, of clients had come from, or if you were just an, an average woman yeah. with perfect clear skin, just maintaining. Mm -hmm. um, that woman needs this too. Yeah. And, and so I wanted so much to bring it to market, but I was also nervous about being able to procure it. Um, and uh, what's good is when that product launched, mm -hmm. um, and it launched uh, at the same time as the Honeybud, um, and those two were my answers to those who had incredibly sensitive skin, really, really delicate. I wanted to bring something softer to the collection because um, I started with these like powerhouses. Yeah, they are powerhouses. <laughs> and and I think that that was an important way to do it. I needed to show the results immediately. Yeah. Get people on then board you can with step back a bit. seeing seeing those results. Mm. People do really like to see see that immediately. And then from there, also show that a lot of the results come from being soft that come from you know taking a gentler approach and really tuning in and, and softening into your skin mm. getting out of the way again just allowing your skin the space it needs to heal because um, yeah. our bodies know what to do and usually we're just fighting against we're in the way. everything else we're mm. fighting against the environment we're fighting against our diets we're fighting against our um our hereditary <laughs> blessings yeah. um and we're fighting against too much product and so sometimes you just have to step out of the way. And the honey mud and the blue cocoon really allowed, um, allowed there to be a piece of your ritual that fed and nurtured and nourished and gave a big warm cozy hug um, and brought results from a place that was out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, and the great thing was both of those products right out of the gate blew up. Yeah. And uh, When did blue cocoon launch? And it that. launched. 2013, mm. I believe. <laughs> I forget dates. Yeah. It's all just a whirlwind. Yeah. But, um, and because I've been working with it for years before that, so it's hard for me to yeah, remember totally, yeah. when everyone else got it compared to when I had it. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, I knew once I started working with Blue Tansy that that ingredient was going to change, change the world. And, and it did. And then once I had finalized that formula and all the pieces that play in with it mm. and everything else that's in there, it's not a formula that's just blue tansy. There's so much good yeah. stuff in that's there. That's what I mean. It's a, it's a proper concoction. It's really, really mm. beautiful and special. Mm. And you look at it and it could be just wax with blue dye. Yeah. But there's no wax. Yeah. It's a balm with no wax. It's technically so not even a bomb. It's an oil. Yeah. <laughs> it's an solid oil. oil. It's a solid. Yeah. And naming it was tricky because you want people to understand it and know how to use it. Great name, um, though. Well, the blue cocoon is just cozy. Yeah. It's Great just name. It's cozy and wonderful. Um, I just want to sleep in there. It's like having your own little like personal oceanfront view. It is. It's um, nice. Yeah. So it feels really good. I wanted it to feel really good. I wanted it to be beautiful and special. Um, and it, that can be a little bit of the challenge is it does feel so beautiful and special that people really ration it and they put it on the top shelf and they save it for spe special yeah. occasions. But you get the best results Just if you use it. it. Yeah. And you've got to use it. I am a big believer of using your best stuff, as Oprah said years ago. Absolutely. Use your best stuff. I always don't have it. Because Why are you saving it? You could again, die. all that work that I do to bring it in fresh, to yeah. get those ingredients in their best possible state, if you let it sit on your shelf, for a year or two years or whatever, you're not, the you're not getting the benefit. And Potency. when I hear people talk about not being able to get through a jar, it's because you're not using it. Yeah. Because um, I'm telling you, I go through jars <laughs> so fast, but it's also the one product I could use just that and nothing else, 
and yeah. and I'd be fine. My skin would be happy. And for skin like mine, that's some kind of major miracle. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that's the formula that really that one was for me. That was a total selfish like this is what I need um, formula, and and I've just been so. Uh, humbled to see how many other people addicts I think they're called addicts have needed that yeah yeah addicts <laughs> if, the, if the blue tansy supply goes out in the world there are a lot of people who are going to be extremely miserable well it's your fault it will go out it is my fault and <laughs> <laughs> um, it's your fault <clears throat> luckily for us part of the um, huge advantage of being first is the for years we've built these relationships mm. and this is the difference and this is the difference in all of my ingredients is I have spent years fostering these relationships to get closer and closer to the source to get closer and closer to the farmer to get all the middlemen out of the way and make sure that what comes through these doors is what we're told it is is what we're paying for is yeah. what we've invested in is what your skin needs and that's huge because any other person coming in right now starting a line if they're just buying off the common market, which is all you can do until you have gained those relationships, which is hard and nobody bothers with because you can just click a button and buy it, yeah. anybody, anywhere. Um, until you've done that, you're going to get crap. Mm -hmm. You're going to get the cheapest on the market. You're going to get adulterated ingredients. And it's not your fault. Mm -hmm. when it shows no, Some up, people like it's their fault. Some people aren't as ethically minded as you. So you, you're a good person. Know. You're a generous person. I think, I think some people are idiots, but that's okay. But also you have to trust, right? Yeah. So when you click a button online, whether you're an average consumer buying lavender oil or you're a new organic company buying lavender oil or you're an Estee Lauder of the world buying lavender oil, um, unless you have relationships to yeah. where this is coming from, you're all buying from the same, yeah. the same spot. And with certain things, that's okay. But most is not. Even something as simple as olive oil, you can just Google that. Like something like 80% of olive oil at Whole Foods is not exactly what they say it is. Yeah. And that's Whole Foods. Yeah, no, <laughs> if they can't get it right. Right. What hope is there for someone who's and, just starting out? And they don't know. And so, I mean, that's, that's the real issue is you have these beautiful brands that are starting up and with the best intentions and the best ethics and all their hearts going into it and in the newness and excitement of being mm. brand new and, and they'll trust that when they click buy on Blue Tansy, that it's Blue Tansy. Yeah. And when it shows up, it says Blue Tansy mm. and nothing else. Um, but if you send that out to a lab, it probably has dye in it, it probably has candy in it. Mm. And that's just where we are. Yeah. Because these little areas of Morocco where this is grown are, Inundated, cannot yeah. supply the whole world with this ingredient that's blown up. And that's not any different than um, what's gone on with argan oil, what's gone on with like yeah. any of the other big oils that are yeah. hard to produce, that are difficult to grow, yeah. that are difficult to source. Yeah. Um, you get what you and are in for. parts of the world that are tricky. Yeah. A lot of our ingredients come from areas that, or trouble. you know, if they're not having a typhoon, they're having a political uprising. So, uh, yeah. And <clears throat> there's so much of that, and it's it's really it's a difficult thing, and it's a major part of what we do is the relationship to the ingredient and everything that comes with it. Yeah, because if your ingredient source dries up, the product dries up, and that kind of shows that what you have is something special that you can't just manufacture 3,000 bottles a day of no. and just churn it out you know because then it becomes it really does become man-made and mass as opposed to prestige and still independent and if I can't get the ingredient that I want at the quality that um, that I've promised my clients I just simply won't sell it exactly and and that's but when you say that to your clients it. they'll go okay fair enough sure they're not going to say, well, I want to get a business. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where if I delicate did work differently, I could also just go on Google, buy blue tansy from yeah, wherever. But we would all know. Um, you might know. We would know. Well, the results wouldn't be the I same. I would know. You would know, yeah. And that's the difference. You would know <laughs> when you would care. To me. You would know when you would care. Yeah. Other people would know. They might just not care. Right. So what's 
going forward, how do you see sort of the rest of this year and next year? Because I know what I like is that you don't, like we said before, you don't just make a product on a whim. Mm -hmm. You're not like, oh, sheet masks are popular. I must do one. <laughs> you know, I don't, which I am grateful for, by the way. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I just, where do you see it sort of going? Is there is there any newness, but only mm -hmm. kind of as a question, not as a demand? Yeah. <laughs> um, there's always newness. I, I always have ideas, and that's a, uh, something that I struggle with because I'm, I'm the formulator. Yeah. That's still true. That's still true today. That's always been true. It's still true now. And, um, and that's where a lot of my fire comes from is, is developing formulas and is thinking about um, what else can help and what else can touch people and um, can something else that I bring to the table transform in the way that these formulas that exist have. Um, and so I'm always working on something. Um, there's an oil that I'm working on right now that, mm -hmm. uh, that I will eventually share with you. Yeah. Um, that uh, that fills a, a spot that I think is missing nice. in, in my collection and uh, really answers questions for people who are really hypersensitive to everything wow. beyond that that's what the, the collection is already designed yeah. for, um, taking that one step further. Um, and and it's a multitasker, which I love. Yeah. I really like Most of your products, I think, are a multitasker. They are. The things that you put on the, the skin to leave on, mm -hmm. they're definitely multitaskers. Yeah, so many ways to, to mix and match with that. So, uh, so that's a formula I've been working on for a couple of years and really just refining the, the last of what's going into it and then finding the best source for each of those of really key pieces, which which is the funnest part, because then I get to start over finding more farms <laughs> and going closer. God. Um, in between doing this and running this house and having babies. And all those things. So, uh, so working on that, and then as, as you know, the, um, the scents, I just love, I just love uh, what fragrance does, mm -hmm. um, the connection to a person and to scent memories and the whole olfactory emotional connection yeah. I think is really beautiful and that ties into every formula that I do anyway um, but I would love to do that more intentionally um, so I'm always thinking of things like that beyond that it's about accessibility I'm uh, we're working on expanding our sample program mm -hmm. really letting it be much easier for people to experience our brand yeah because um, there's a big demand for that there is I think and some people they can't afford to buy in blind yeah and they appreciate the fact that when you say to them we're going to try and make the samples but equally you want your samples to still be of a good quality yep and still sort of you know they're, they're not I know how much samples cost to make it's not a cheap process at the best of times when you're doing plastic yeah. tubes well and, it, and we do it the same way as our full size yeah the effort that we put in is the same thing so we don't it's like Lego it's we're not a like a miniature turning out you know hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of samples or full-size products yep. a day that's just not how we do it yeah and really like you talk about our lab over there it is but it looks like a kitchen yes it does it looks like a small bakery yeah and and that's how we function and so when you imagine like filling the mini muffy muffin tins or something yeah. like that's basically what we're doing back there yeah and uh and so you know we'll get hundreds of emails asking for samples yeah. and uh and i want to say yes right but again i can only say yes if it's if we're going to do justice yeah you don't send a sample of something that isn't actually a true representation of the product no and it has to be big enough for you to actually get real use out of it and for you to really be able to experience it um and i still have to honor the integrity of the ingredients i'm not going to put my samples in plastic yeah I'm just not going to do it. Because it's not representative of the product. It's not representative of the product. It doesn't honor the ingredient. And uh, plastic degrades. And when you mix it with oils, and especially with essential oils, it degrades and it goes into your skin. And so I'm not going to do that. And yeah. then it would be great if I could. I could make it cheap. I could make yeah, it accessible. Make it um, I could go through some distribution facility to do it um, and make life easier and be able to say yes to everybody. But that's not how I work. Not how you do it. <laughs> so, the so samples I'm are coming, but that's good. It's good that there's something coming. It. But it is coming, and um, and it will be accessible as a full collection, so you can really experience everything all the way through. And we'll also be making individual samples available. Mm -hmm. And even right now, if you order through our website directly, um, you get to choose two samples with every order that are free, that are big, that are beautiful, that are in glass. Yeah. Um, and so we already do our best with that. 
Yeah. Um, so you just as much as we can. We're stepping it up a bit, and I also would like to make them more available for our retailers, some of whom offer samples, but they're usually just teeny, and they're usually in plastic, yeah. and and they're not made fresh in our kitchen. No, not at all. And so they don't represent us at, as as yeah. should be as as I really think that people deserve. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I know you have to get back to baby boy, so here's my question. <laughs> when I come over for dinner, as yes. you're such a chef, what's your favorite thing to cook? <laughs> oh, oh, that's really tricky. Um, what are you good at? What do you think? Oh, I'm going to whip this up, and Robert goes, oh, yeah, do that, do that, what are you cooking? <laughs> <laughs> I make stuff up all the time. Um, I cook a lot of vegetables, mm. and, uh, and we eat all kinds of things, but, but I cook a lot of vegetables, and this time of year, I just love to roast vegetables. Uh, I think I think I maybe won my husband over it's behind us, so you can hear me. But um, in the early years, I would uh, I had this giant cast iron and all kinds of different roast vegetables with maple syrup and a bunch of spices, and sage and smoked paprika and and oh, all kinds of good nice. things. And you roast that up, and it just turns into like vegetable candy. Oh, it's insane. Nice. So that used to be my thing. I'm also, I'm from Minnesota, and so I grew up with wild rice as a staple. I love wild and rice. And so, wild rice with a bunch of roast vegetables is... That'll do. Is see about 7 Good. I think we have a date with some boys tonight. We do have a date tonight, but we're not... <laughs> we'll, they'll have seen that before this goes up, but we won't talk about it now. But okay. thank you so much for taking time out of your day. I know how busy you are, and I know that the guys are sitting here that should be sitting over there, and everyone's being quiet. And thank you for the interruption, and I wish you so much continued success. I love seeing them do so well with, you know, coming from a really good place and ethically sourced, and it comes from your heart, and just everything done to perfection. So congratulations. Thanks for visiting me. And thank you. Oh, well done. I mean, oh, she still smells so good. Um, we, I don't know what's next, because I'm in a May bubble, but thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye.